Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the new season of What Are You Consuming? I'm here with my co-host, Tommy Osa. And I am here with my co-host, Mike Kluger, who's actually like the host. I'm just kind of like the sidekick to it. I just want to be clear about that. We are not sidekicks. We are both equally mischievous, humor, and thoughtful folk. Yeah, but you're taller, so you're host. I mean, that just means they pile it higher. (laughs) What are they piling? (laughs) Well. (laughs) (laughs) So thank you for being here for another season. Our first season lasted for approximately three episodes. It was more than three episodes. It was four? Something like that? Three or four. All right, so I have to change the caption on here. It said, like, you know, this is episode number four, so we have to go back and say. It's the new season. It's episode one of the new season, and we are here in what I would assume is Rockland Webb's uh, conference room. Yeah, this is, like, the headquarters, like, Shangri-La, if they didn't have any Shangri. I mean, it's... Kind of nice. And speaking of Laz, Laz is about music, and we are always talking about music here. We had another Stony Music Fest. It was really successful and amazing. How much money did we raise? We raised, well, the whole event was approximately $12,000, right? And we raised $2,500 for the Stony Point Police Athletic League. Awesome. Yeah? Awesome. And special thanks to our fiscal arm, which is the North Rockland Chamber of Commerce. You'll have to zoom in on your Zoom in order to see we'll this. We'll post a link later. Yeah, we'll post the link. But, you know, it's, and I have to say, you know, just um, the chamber really has come together over the last few years. You know, I've been in it for like about, I don't know, 10, 11 years and stuff like that. And it's had board members that kind of like, Ugh! and I happen to be like right in the middle of that. Uh, but this board is absolutely fantastic. I mean, they're, they're thoughtful. They think through all the different directions that, that they can go. And the focus is really on helping the local businesses around here. So shop local, shop small, NorthRocklandChamber.org. You become a member for as low as $5 per month. Oh, my goodness. Back to you. Um, that's a perfect segue, segue into what I wanted to talk about today, which is about communities and communities within communities. Mm-hmm. So part of what makes the uh, Chamber of Commerce so strong is they are a community of people who are there to help the local community. We are trying to help the local community by encouraging you all to buy local and all of that. But there's this whole concept of finding your people within your community. Right. And sometimes your people are the people who put on Sony Music Fest. Sometimes it's your church group. Sometimes it's your gardening group. Whoever those people are, um, the more you become one with your people, the easier it is for you to become one with yourself because you are easier. It's an easier place to become who you actually are yeah it's not this pretentious I know I know Barbie's the big thing and everyone, like don't be mainstream be yourself oh, if, the more the more yourself that you are the easier it is to find those people that are your people and again it becomes this nice cycle of you're more allowed to be yourself yeah and you played a song for me when we got here Yep. Uh, this morning, what was it called? It was called Find Your People. Um, it's a newer song by, I have to look up the uh, the artist, give me just one second, by Drew Holcomb. I have never met him. I don't know anything about him. Um, but he wrote an amazing song. Um, and to talk about music, uh, because Tom again likes talking about music, um, big time. there's a lot of inspirational music out there that is not religious. So let's do a little brainstorming here give me three songs that you find inspiring that have nothing to do with religion god or any of that clutch x-ray visions okay would be one okay um i would say the latest metallica album has a fantastic track that i listen to often it's called shadows follow and what inspires you about that because metallica everybody knows who metallica is and they wouldn't necessarily go to a Metallica's being inspirational. What inspires oh, absolutely. you? What absolutely. inspires you? Well, I, let, let's start with the clutch one. All right, so, you know, mm-hmm. I'm a late bloomer, and basically, you know, I, I left home at a, a very late age, 26, and then when my, uh, you know, kind of like my world was collapsing around me, I got fired from uh, my job as a web developer slash salesperson. Um, I, my fiance and I broke up, thank God. Mm-hmm. This was like 15 years ago, so not now. I'm happily married. Thank God everything's good. 
And then the third thing is, is the worst part is like my stepfather got endocrinal cancer and he died within like a month. It was a lot of so I moved back home. Me and my mom kind of like huddled up, we, you know, got things straight and, uh, and then, you know, moved back out, continued my business and so on. But um, that first song, the X-Ray Visions really uh, kind of stands out to me because it's basically about a guy that just he, he huddles in with himself. Mm -hmm in a motel room in this case and he basically takes information from his suitcase and he figures out what to do so i mean to me i find it kind of like inspiring because it's like you know you, you, when when a person is all alone they have to find inspiration from something other than what's going on around them you know and this actually speaks to your song mm -hmm. you know is like the the people around us really help us to to grow right so for a little while, I didn't have that. And I just basically had to do it on my own. So that's the first song. The second song is called Shadows Fall. And I can't exactly explain it. I mean, it's Metallica. You know, they're kind of like next level stuff. But um, just uh, like an inner drive that basically just propels us forward to get things done. But at the same time, there's always pieces that need to be picked up behind us. Um, so in a spiritual sense, I think, uh, you know, because we all have the spirit in us. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of like a way of just being able to understand how the spirit has to deal with all those things around us, internal and external stuff. And something about community that I want to point out, all of the stuff about the inner explorations, the comments, pull yourself up by, your, up by your bootstraps, those are all terrible. And this is why, because it's assuming that you can do everything by yourself. You cannot. Human beings were meant to be in community. Going back to our, the theme of our show today. So you need to find out what, where you are in that community. What are you supposed to be doing? What is, your, what is your place? And be the best at it. Be the best you you can be in your community because that's what they need you to do. If you're the best baker, then, then bake the best bread. Can't speak this morning. No, 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 it's I okay. More, I I'm looking coffee. at myself <laughs> in like in the in the uh, the the zooms and the AOLs and like the videos right now. And I think like the best person I can be right now is on the ball flex because I really I packed on the pounds the last few months. Hey, I've eaten so much birthday cake in the last two months. I, I have no idea what my weight is. I refuse to go check the scale. Scale, but my community doesn't care how fat I get. So lucky. You well, know, it's like. Uh, yeah, what what are what have we been consuming? <laughs> a lot, <Birthday> cake. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of birthday cake. So, but back to the point. Back to the point. Find your community. Be the best version of yourself. Yes. And consume the good things. Going back to inspirational songs, because that's something that you should consume through your ears. Um. So find your people again. Talking about finding yourself, finding your group. Um when you're in that place where you don't have your people that's when the, those songs that you're talking about where you're 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 alone you're alone with your thoughts you're alone in your, with, your, with just what you have and right. you gotta go someplace mm -hmm. sometimes the thing that you need to just do is sit in front of the mirror and reflect mm -hmm. look at the glass look at who you are and ask yourself these two questions who am i and what do i want yes not oh i want a cheeseburger today but I want world peace. I want to live in a house. I want to have a garden. I want to have more music festivals. Who are you and what do you want? So he is Tommy Osa. He wants more music in Rockland and he made it happen. Actually, right now, I just want a cheeseburger. <laughs> but I Probably mean, early for a cheeseburger. <laughs> you said cheeseburger and I'm like, I now I'm like, you know, thinking about okay. like the essence so, of the cheeseburger. So what's the best cheeseburger in Rockland County? Oh, in North Rockland. North oh, Rockland. We're going to stay in North Rockland. In North Rockland, because um, we are North Rockland boys right now. Oh, geez. I would say. Who are you sending everybody to burgers for? No, today? no, no, no. It's not like that. I, I, hmm, that's a good question. because, and, and quite frankly, I mean, I have one in Rockland that I can think of, but at the moment. <sighs> Can I get back to you on that? Because I'm I'm scale I'm cycling through my different cheeseburger well, venues. I will tell you, when all of my friends come from upstate, they all want to go to the filling station. They Got love it. the filling station. I don't know the folks there. All I can tell you is they make tasty burgers because I've eaten their bunch. They do. They do. Actually, um, we bid on the project for that location like about, I don't know, five to seven years ago. 
So, and that particular website project we didn't get, and it's all good. But I've gone there like about a half a dozen times, and the food is fantastic. I just, I mean, you know, for me, like also like the ambiance and everything, you know, maybe it's a little bit like hoity and it shouldn't be because like my family had the bike store like right by there. And I used to just like, you know, be out there after work, drinking a Coors Light, looking at the traffic go by. Coors Light. I Ew. know. Yes, Ew. yes, yes. Ew. Yeah, with you. So just as a recap. Oh, from the, the filling station has good beer. The filling station <laughs> does have good beer. That's the other thing. But um, yeah, so a recap, like, you know, a few episodes back when Mike and I did this, he was railing on me because I drank Bud Light and Coors Light, you know, but he, you did introduce Hold on. me For to- two reasons. One, it's bad beer. Two, it's not local beer. And, 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 and um, now I know that that I can drink better beer so, and support your local community and, and support your local community. And it's, you know, obviously, you know, they got some really great Stony, uh, uh, Stony Point Brewing Company, uh, uh, yes. Rick town beer house, which right is down the street from my house. Yep. Right next to babes. And by the way, we haven't been on since, uh, Jerry passed away. May Jerry from babes rest in peace. Jerry senior, not Jerry junior, Jerry senior. Yeah. Um, but you know, uh, right next to it is Bricktown Beer House, and they got some great craft brewery over there. Yep. Um, they don't make burgers, but no, they, they make, make brats. And the weenie of the week. <laughs> the weenie of the week. <laughs> David puts this out on social like every week. He's like, and, and they make. I mean, like Wiener Schnitzel and like you know. Very German style. Love it's lovely people. Go visit them at Bricktown Bricktown Brew, Brew Bricktown Beer House. Beer House. Yeah. B i e r something like that. I can't spell again. Yeah. We'll do a link later. We'll do a link later. <laughs> we got to like follow up on all the links. But um, I, I would say, you know, I'm going to throw this in there as, and, you know, Kevin Lynch from Lynch's restaurant, uh, he moved the entire operation up to Philip Rotella Golf Course. Now it's called Lynch's on the Green. But I'm going to throw Kevin's name in for the best burger. I mean, okay, okay. yeah, it's, it's know, a good burger. On Kevin's facility, the one and only time I had been there was part of um your new venture called sponsor band sponsor band so we talk a lot about music and what you're listening to and tommy has come up with a company Mm -hmm. called sponsor band tell us a little bit about sponsor band well the most important part of it is you're part of it right i am definitely part of it okay so as the organizer of several different companies and chambers of commerce and blah 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 it's all you know obviously creating an organization over time um, but music is very near and dear to me. Um, you know, I, it got me through some rough times. We'll talk about that in later episodes. Like and everything. Metallica and Clutch. Shadows Follow. No. So um, it's very near and dear to me. And I want to make it more near and dear, not just to me, but to the local population around here. So let me ask you something. All right. What would you prefer? Would you prefer to see a name brand band? Let's say, for instance, like Imagine Dragons or U2 or the Spin Doctors or Def Leppard or anything like that. Would you prefer to take your entire family, drop them in the car or on the train, bring them all the way to Madison Square Garden about an hour away, Deal with the parking, deal with getting into the stadium. It's a lot of money. And the money, I didn't even mention the money, but you're dropping a few hundred dollars even before you get in the car for the tickets, and that's not even including the concessions. Would you prefer to do that, or would you prefer to go 15 minutes away to Rockland Boulder Stadium, now called Clover Stadium? I mean... You know, and I'm sure the show. I'm sure the ticket prices aren't even as as uh, exorbitant as Madison Square Garden. Not that we've done this yet. Yeah, and I have seen and I have seen some really great bands over at Clover Stadium. So 38 Special, the Charlie Daniels Band, Darius Rucker, uh, the Beach Boys, all these bands. Um, Tommy. Yes. All of did those I get are very very old old bands. So am I. You're not that. Old. I'm 47. I'm 50. Okay, so we're three years apart. It's okay. Those are all old bands. And that's the other reason why you're the host of the show. You're tall and you're a little old. <laughs> so, all right. But, you know, to your point, and this is about sponsor band, is our whole objective is to bring those bands closer here. Now, the thing that we need to do. Hold is on, hold on. You're missing a key point that local. I'm trying to, that they are local musicians. Local musicians. Yeah. They are homegrown musicians that they could be the next 
Darius Rucker or all, any of the other names that you listed. But we're trying to bring Rockland County musicians to Rockland County folk to entertain. Yeah. Why don't they have a seat at the table? Tommy, let's give them a seat at the table. Well, one of the problems is that the only way that we as artists, and I'm in two different bands, that we as, I'm going to just call myself a musician, I'm not an artist, but uh, artists can connect with those bigger bands is to create their own following. And our job at Sponsor Band is to help those local bands create that following because one of our companies, rocklandsnews.com, which currently has about 22,000 viewers per month and rising at a 15% rate and per again, month. Links, 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 blah, blah, blah. Yeah. But um, basically, it's uh, one way that we can help advocate for local bands. In addition to that, sponsor bands will also find sponsors for local musicians that will, they're looking for visibility as well. So if you're a sponsor mm -hmm. and you want to sponsor a local band, please call Tommy and he will pick a band that will fit in your facility. Or you could go right to sponsorband.com and you can sign up as a band or you can sign up as a brand, sponsorband.com. And again, the whole objective, and we're getting, you know, this is obviously a little promotional, we'll flip back to, you know, aesthetic things. But the, the whole idea really is to change the paradigm of local bands participating in local venues around here. Because restaurants, and I'm going to be nice about this, I'm going to be nice Please. right now. Nice the to restaurants, our you know, they have to look after their staff and everything. And there's a metric in their minds of what the band is valued. And by the way, restaurants, no offense, but the, the metric that most of you have in mind is a little bit lower than what they should be because you don't factor in practice time. You don't factor in equipment, travel, things like that. So what we do is we balance it out. You pay the band some, and then the brands pay the band some. We record the video performance, we post it out there. You get visibility through the videos. The bands get visibility through the videos, and the brands get visibility through the videos. Everybody wins. Yep. Everybody wins. And in all seriousness, I think this is my coming out party, and I'm looking right there. I'm wait, looking wait, at, wait, 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 coming out. Are we supposed to get a rainbow flag? flag I did that? that 15 years ago. <laughs> this is my coming out party when it comes with regards to the music thing. We're all in it, okay? I don't want to get, like, you know, just all crazy about this, but I decided about this three or four years ago. This is my life's calling, and I'm not saying that I'm going to be the only one doing it. It takes a community. That's true. All right? But I am all in on this, and I want to make sure that this happens before I die. Because everyone... Hold on, no, no, no. I want to make sure this happens before you're too old to enjoy it. Well, I saw this biography, Rodney Dangerfield, yesterday. He gets no respect, by the way. He did at the end, man. He did at the end. Yeah. And I, I'm not even looking for the respect factor, but on his deathbed... All the comedians that loved him and knew oh. him the best, they came there to encourage him a little bit. Okay. And um, I had I had tears in my eyes yesterday. I really did. It was, okay. um, yeah. So it's like, you know, I, and I, I, I knew this before. Like, you know, what what do I, I want to do with the time that I have here? Mm -hmm. with, with, you know, with the good yeah. people I have right. around me. With you the know? community that you found. Yeah, brother. All right. So I'm, I'm sucking up the oxygen. Um, but it's like, it, it means something to me. It really does. So uh, I, don't, I don't know if I explained it right, but the bottom line is, for those of you that are watching, more music, closer to home uh, with the bands that you love. And if you're a band, go to sponsorband.com. If you're a brand, go to sponsorband.com. And if you're a restaurant or a bar, go to sponsorband.com. Mm -hmm. Because this encourages what we've been saying from last season, today, buy local, shop local, because the things that are going on on the global scale, you don't have any effect. You can affect that bar, that restaurant, that band by going there instead of going to Applebee's, instead of going to pick, insert big corporate name brand there, who doesn't care about any of us? Mm -hmm. The local folk. They tend to care. They care about their your your local sports team. They care about your local high school team. Applebee's doesn't care about us. Mm -hmm. Why would they? Right. Why should they? And I just got a calendar in the mail, and this is kind of really nice about all the different people that run North Rockland High School, like the yeah. staff and. Wait, are we allowed to even use the term Applebee's? 
Or are we going to get like sued for corporate infringement or something like that? We're going to get a laser beam. <laughs> oh, <laughs> the laser. <laughs> so again, a link that needs to be posted. He was playing Dr. Evil in a dunk tank. I, I watched it over and over. It was hysterically funny. All right. But it just is a disclaimer, you know, it's a video thing, but there, you know, there were much more important people there. And it's like, and first of all, thank you, Diego Aviles, uh, for helping to organize this with the Marian Shrine. It was amazing. You know, great day. I had Colonel Dolan there doing the Mass of Five. Oh, I met him a couple of years ago. Yeah, he's pretty Very chill, nice guy. You know? He's very funny. Um, town Supervisor Jim Monahan was there. Uh, Howie wasn't there in body, but uh, Jim Monahan had a, a face of Howie. That he brought with him to the dunk tank. Um, Robert Maziello. Uh, Die- Diego was a good sport. He got on there. I dressed up as Dr. Evil. So it was a lot of fun. So again, we'll put that link at the end of this. Um, a lot of because links to remember. <laughs> we'll go back. We'll edit this up. We'll polish it up for the people who didn't want to watch live. They get to have the fancy version. Maybe we'll put some songs and some cuts in there. Maybe some commercial breaks with some songs. Yeah, yeah. You know, that can be you know, done. You doing Dr. Evil. <laughs> I'm sure you all want to see it. <laughs> you got the laugh down. I like it. I got to tell you, like, when I was up on the dunk tank, I was really nervous. And I, like, practiced this beforehand. Like, I had, um, I, I took notes. I was watching, like, you know, how to be Dr. Evil. And, like, there's all these YouTube videos. And, like, I had, like, a whole bunch of quotes. Like, my father invented the question mark. Can you remind me what I pay you people for? Sharks with lasers. Let this be a mm-hmm. reminder to you that this organization okay. will not tell. So I'm up on the dunk tank, right? Mm-hmm. And I, you know, obviously nervous because, yeah. you know, who gets dunked in a Dr. Evil costume holding Mr. Bigglesworth? You do. <laughs> <laughs> and that just whole, goes to show the level he will go for his community. The whole fucking time. Sorry. Rated, R, rated PG-13. Beep. I had my, my finger up like this, and it almost became like instinct, like don't let the finger down. <laughs> it was just up like this. It was bad. It was bad. It was so bad. But was it was it like bad, like watching a train wreck, you couldn't look away? Yeah. Like the, it's, it's comedic because it's so bad? Yes. Yes, exactly. Yeah. That's basically what it was. It that was is not comedy. what Sponsor Band is going for, but that is the level that Tommy is willing to go for Sponsor Band. Mm-hmm. I saw town supervisor Monahan. He just did his stint on the on the dunk tank, and I I was just getting out of the bathroom, and I said, "Do not go in there." <laughs> it wasn't that bad, but anyway. But yeah, we had a good time. I mean, overall, it was just it was uh, it was uh, and you know for for a great event. So the event the event was called the Rise Up Festival, and it was really you know just encouraging people to be in an environment of a good spirit. So Which talks near goes back to our um, find your people, find your local community within your community, because um, it's important. Mm-hmm. That's how you get stuff done. Yes, and don't say expletives while you're talking about the place where you. I mean, you could still meet with out. your community. I can, I can bleep them out. <laughs> so, if you have a lot of editing. Oh for wait, this thing. wait, we're live. We can't beat that. Out. We can't. <laughs> that's right. We're we're live. I don't know, but. Uh, but what you know, I mean, it has been like literally uh, at least six months since we did our last. Uh, no longer ago than that, right? Again, we had Stony Music Fest Nine. That's Stony Music Fest which Nine. The entire last season, all we talked about was Stony Music Fest Eight. Right. Um, so we've got another one in the bag. Eight went went well. Nine went well. Um, the bands that we all had a great time. We celebrated some birthdays. Mm-hmm. Frank Casio, he's awesome. Brother Ben, thank you for being there once yeah. again. Um, we got one last one. One last, wait, what do you mean last one? Yeah, Stony Music Fest 10 will be the final Stony Music Fest. You're going to make me cry. I know. I why know. why are we ending? Well, you know, it just seems like 10 is a good number. What do you think? I, are, are we retiring at 10? What, what's, what's going on? Well, I, I just think that 10 is a good number to end at. So no more Stony Music Fest? Well, you know, I f- figure we put it on ice for a little while. And then we just focus on sponsor band? 
We focus on sponsor band, and as we talked about a few times on the air, now we're going to take the whole thing over to Rock and Boulder Stadium in uh, 2025. So we are evolving like the caterpillar and the butterfly. Yes. What color are our wings going to be? Multicolored, like okay. Joseph's uh, Technicolor dream coat. All right. Yeah. Fair enough. Fair enough. So, and uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. We've already made some contact with Clover Stadium representatives, and we're aiming high. We are looking to book. Wait, is that supposed to get beeped out? The high part? Oh, no. wait. No, that's legal now. Never mind. <laughs> I know nothing of these things. So, um, we're looking to uh, have at Clover Stadium for our 2025 concert. Def Leppard! No. Def Leppard! What? Def Leppard! What? Def Leppard! Oh, I, think we're, I think we're done with that show. That's always like a Chappelle thing. You ever yeah, seen a Chappelle no, thing? No, it's more like a Seth what? Green what? thing. What? <laughs> I can't hear you. No, I'm serious. Turn it up. Turn that shit up. No, but we're, we're aiming for death. Oh, wait, I'm late. I'm late with the buzzing you on the curses again. I'm sorry. Uh, All right, but that that's neither here nor there. What have you been up to over uh, the last six months? Let's see. We're in August now. Um, I have been to a couple of Renaissance festivals, New York Renaissance festivals coming up. We've been, uh, my, my friends and I have been uh, putting together the, uh, the old bullseye booth. Mm. So my friends run some clothes there. So if you're at the Renaissance festival, come grab an ale, say hello. Um, so what do you do at the Renaissance festival? Like what, what is your uh, vibe? I am a pirate captain. <laughs> and I, That's perfect. And I stand there and I look sexy in my pirate costume. Look. Also perfect. And I drink lots of stuff you are a fetching character well, I, I can you. tell thank that you. you know character someone asked me about my personality I said well everyone tells me I'm a character and I guess it's true Tommy says so I think you you always keep it positive I try um and you're you've always been helpful especially kind of getting volunteer organizational things done which is not I know people who know people mm -hmm. yeah which again goes back to knowing your community knowing what people can do and uh, not expecting things from them that they can't do. So this morning, I woke up and picked up my phone, and there was a message from an old friend of mine who gave me this really deep, heartfelt message mm. um, that wasn't necessary, wasn't required, but she felt it in the moment. And she talked about um, how Instead of seeing who I was and what I brought to the table, she was bringing her own expectations and trying to put them on me. And she apologized for doing that. And at the end of the message, she talked about how she was appreciative to the, everything that I brought to the table and the fact that we are still friends after all this time, even though she did that. And what I want to caution everyone with that message is when you're coming to meet any of your friends, your spouse, your partners, whatever it is, make sure you check your expectations and make sure that those expectations are something that someone can actually do for you. I can't, I'm not going to ask Tommy to be tall. That's my job to be tall. I'm not going to ask. He shouldn't ask me to do web design. That's not my thing. Please do web design. I don't want to do web design anymore. Uh, that's your job. My job is to be the audio engineer, <laughs> right? That's true. That's true. So, <laughs> Find what you do best. Yeah. Bring it to the table. Make sure you're clear about what you can do. And when you have expectations, make sure that the person you have expectations for can actually do the things that you expect of them. And they know that it is expected of them and they have agreed to it. Right. Right, exactly. You know, and our company has gone through changes over the last few months and we have like, you know, different people coming in, different people coming out, uh, going out coming out they didn't come out they just went uh but that's fine no so, right no rainbow flags no rain you know not that there's anything wrong with that no you know, not at all good, but um yeah be who you are yeah so i and you've done this for many years at the mm -hmm. renaissance Fest. Mm -hmm. oh, right. absolutely so do you when you're in your character mm -hmm. as the as mm -hmm. the pirate mm -hmm. you know the uh was the the guy from uh dread uh, from the princess bride uh, dread scott roberts dread, dread pirate roberts dread pirate roberts all right. So tell me a little bit more about your character. You know, who, do you, when you take on that persona, do you feel like you're more yourself or less yourself? Um, 
it's more like I'm exploring a facet of myself. Okay, that right. Might, that, I guess it's I allowing that. me to take on a part uh, of my personality, my character. It's almost like playing a video game, except you're in real life. Mm-hmm. So I'm not actually being a pirate car- captain, but. Uh, I get to talk like one, I get to act like one, I get to interact with people who don't know me as Mike necessarily, who just see me in this costume talking in a silly voice. Mm -hmm. Um, I tend to like to walk around singing lots of songs because everything's about music. In every facet of me, there's always a song. Mm -hmm. Um, So really it's about just exploring that facet. And I think all of you out there who play video games and that are uh, uh, character based, it's similar to that because you are exploring a facet of yourself, even though those characters may have uh, definitive storylines or whatever in the video game, you're still playing it a certain way. So you have that choice to play it this way or that way or, or third, whatever the video game offers you. That's still part of your personality. You're still exploring that. Um, even if you're playing something like Grand Theft Auto and you're doing evil stuff, oh. you need to get that out of yourself so you're not doing it within your community. Yeah. Yeah, when I play Grand Theft Auto, I'm Christopher Walken in uh, King of New York. It's like, <laughs> see, you know, and you need to get some of that out so you don't do it in an inappropriate manner. Yes, exactly. You know, it's like, you know, it's like whatever. But um, yeah, I, I think one of the early personas that I can relate to is Spider-Man. Okay. Definitely okay. Spider-Man. Okay. Great, with great power comes great responsibility. Oh, absolutely. Great, great. So, yeah. How long does the uh, the event last? The Renaissance Festival is it's it, more than a week, right? Oh, it's, it opens the weekend the weekend before Labor Day. Okay. And it goes until Columbus Day weekend. All right, so it's like three or four weeks at least. Oh, seven. Wow. Seven okay. weekends. All right. And Labor Day. I was only at the Renaissance Festival once. So I've been there life. every year for. Two and a half decades. Mm. Wow. Yeah. That's intense. Yeah. All right. So this is, I mean, this is a facet of your your character. Hold on. To tie back in. Yeah. There is a specific community that works at the Renaissance Festival. Yeah. And some of them live around here and some of them don't. So there are some of these people that, as the Ren Fair starts, I don't get to see from October until August. Mm-hmm. So there's a community of Rennies yeah. that I go and I'm so happy to see because they bring such an interesting and different energy yep. that you wouldn't normally see any other way. Like the doors get together one more time. Right. Mm-hmm. Except it's always one more time every year. Mm-hmm. Digging it. Yeah. I got to come there this year. I like, you know, and it's been so busy. I mean, like, the amount yeah. of like work output that has been expected, especially since we bought the news thing mm-hmm. is Unbelievable. And I'm, that's actually Hold why on. I'm glad that this we're is doing because this on a Tommy's, Monday morning. Com- Tommy's community isn't big enough. So everybody's got to work extra oh, hard. Please, no more community. We're good. <laughs> you know, I just want friends, clo- you know, good that, friends. But that's and, your yeah. community. If yeah. you have a bigger Rockland News community working on it, more hands, many hands makes for light work. That's the that's the statement. Amen to that. Yeah. So yeah, and that's not my strong suit. Like I, I have this tendency of taking things on myself. Bad delegator. Bad Tom delegator. Good is a delegator. Bad delegator. Good delegator. That's true. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. We just need an alligator. Um, or a crocodile. Or a crocodile. Where's Loki? My doggy had. I have like a um a dog. He's like a Burmese Mountain Dog, Labrador Retriever, Rottweiler, and Hold German on. Shepherd. That's a bear. He's he's a bear. He's, he's like he's got this alligator that's about yay large. And he just walks around with like a big mush, just like, you know, squeaking the thing. You know, so, but uh, before we cause that, that feeling to happen in this particular podcast. So you're at the Renaissance Festival. (laughs) That's a weird segue back to the Renaissance Festival. (laughs) Why? Um, What happens? A lot of people at the Renaissance Festival are free to really explore themselves in um, a way that you can't do in mainstream life. Because mm-hmm. where fantasy meets reality, that's one of the comments of some fairs. So you are able to explore this facet, but you can only do it there. Right. So it's this finite amount of 
hey, let me get this out, let me get this out. It's not like, hey, I'm just going to come home from work and play Grand Theft Auto and get this out. You have to kind of hold it up and bottle it up yeah. until Fair comes out. And some people only get to go to the Renaissance Fair once or twice a season. So they get two days mm -hmm. of the 365 to get their rent fair out. Ah, uh, okay. So there's a lot of uh, creative energy. There's a lot of people who dress up. Um, and it's all in the name of fun, all in the name of being creative. Um, it's the, one of the best places that people watch in the world. Yeah. And it's cosplay probably at its best, right? I work at the Georgia Renaissance Festival as well, and they have the best cosplayers I have ever seen, mm -hmm. ever. Uh, it, it was mm -hmm. just insane. It was just insane. Cosplay is an interesting community. And, you know, aside from like what some people try to stigmatize the community as, it's like you, you're able to become a character. Yes. And also dress like the character. And, right. you know, those things allow you to be the character. Which is what's going on at the Renaissance Festival as well. Mm hmm. Yep. Um, and I think that's why a lot of people get into community theater, they get into acting, because they want to step away from themselves mm -hmm. um and sometimes it's hard to sit in your head to look at that suitcase to to, to be without your community oh, so yeah. you want to step out and be somebody else mm -hmm. but when you're being that other person understand how it's connected back to you yeah well i i would say i mean you know for and i joked around about you know i don't want to do web design anymore and we got a great team and so on and so forth but we've been remote for most of the 15 years that we've done this you know i had an office over at clover stadium and an office in nanuet obviously when covid hit you know it doesn't make any sense to keep an office so i you know moved the whole operation home but you know it's lonely sometimes it's right. really lonely mm -hmm. um and people are you know there's like oh wow remote work exists we've been doing it for 15 years pretty much mm -hmm. so it, it is it is definitely lonely and i think um some of the characters that i've taken on over the years mm -hmm. have helped me to you know have some fun mm -hmm. with those facets of my character right. and one of them was captain america tell me about captain, captain america. america i want to know about Captain Tommy Osa America. So, and this is, and the, you know, again, this is, now we're going to be a little bit more straightforward in these podcasts, all right? And there yeah. were several people on the Chamber of Commerce, and my objective, okay, just as a little back. Are we getting political? No, no, okay. we're not getting political. And they're actually the people that I, I have, uh, I take issue with. They're, if they catch this, great. If they don't catch this, I don't care anymore, all right? It's been like eight years, okay. all right? So, just as a backstory, the Chamber of Commerce was formed uh, out of two chambers of commerce that we helped combine in 2012, 2013, right after Hurricane Sandy. All right. And we made a big effort to connect with as many local businesses as possible. Right. And have events that are created around those different right. businesses so that they can benefit from the advertising. That was always the strategy. OK, okay? so. You know, one of the goofy things, and I'm 47 years old now, if we go back, you know, literally I was like 35, all right? Okay. So I do some goofy things, all right? I, like for Small Business Saturday, mm -hmm. I dropped, dressed up as Captain America. Hold on, you just dressed up as Captain Evil, what, two days ago? Dr. Evil, yeah. 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 Full circle, I guess. Yes, all right. Dress up and basically hold a sign up that says Shop Small Business. Well several chamber of commerce members board at the time thankfully they're just about all gone uh the one person that's left is well two people myself and one other board member that was and i want to say this thank you for not falling in with the rest of the crowd uh and you basically stayed away from it i appreciate you very much for doing that but the other several members all right and they won't be named because we're going to protect well, they, they were guilty. not your people they were not well whose they, people are people because you got a bunch of people just like the song says those were not your people to help you. basically the event manager person had me removed as president i still stayed faithfully on the board had her husband installed as president okay and then on top of that had me removed from the chamber several uh, weeks later. All because you wanted to dress up like Captain America? Because someone said on the chamber, it was creepy, okay? It was creepy that I was dressing up, not as me, but as Captain America, trying to get foot traffic 
into a store that needed the foot traffic. And, and yet, obviously, it bothers me. And I'm, the, I'm going deep Did here. the store appreciate you? The store appreciated me. Did you, were you successful in your mission? Moderately, you know, I wouldn't say like, you know, suddenly it wasn't like, you know, people walking into Windows 95, like, oh, I need a Windows 95. I mean, small victories, it's small business. Small victories, but it, it hurt, you know, and it basically, it, it, you know, created that stigma in my mind. It's like, oh, I'm doing a creepy thing by dressing up as Captain America and holding up a sign. I was playing a character for goodness sake. Well, so this was a hurdle in your life. How did you get past that and how... Or how are you planning on getting past that? No, I got past it. Okay. I left. I left. You know what I did? I left the chamber and I said the heck with it and I actually got out of the local scene for about two years. I moved up north. I lived in Highland Falls in literally a mansion. I didn't have the whole mansion. It was just a studio apartment <laughs> by my lovely self overlooking the Hudson River. So and you had to take some time away to reset yourself. Yeah, and there I stayed for several years, and unfortunately COVID happened and um, helped out where I could remotely. I did uh, different podcasts through Rockland News, connecting all of the government officials, communicating messages about where, when, and what to do, how to get financial assistance from the business uh, perspective and also from the residential perspective. And one day, another chamber board member, thank you, by the way, uh, called me up and said she couldn't handle the chamber anymore and uh, basically turned it back over to me. I did the stint for like about six months uh, as president. I got together a new board uh, and uh, also with one, the person that, you know, stayed away from the drama and really, you know, defended me. It didn't defend me, but like, you know, just basically just didn't get into the mix. And I, again, I appreciate that that was done. Uh, so that board member and I teamed up with several other board members and thank you each one of you. I stepped down from president. Another board member stepped up, became president, and she, that's Stephanie Malowski, and she's handling the chamber great. Uh, and I, I serve as secretary, and I'm happy with that. And I, you know, do obviously still place. goofy stuff. You found your place in your community. Dr. That's... Evil. <laughs> so... If you need a character actor for parties. No, 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 no. I suck. I suck. I, it, it's all for fun, you know, in all seriousness. I, I, and when I saw, I haven't seen you at the Renaissance Festival, okay. but I want to now. What? Yeah. I'm there. Mm -hmm. Smack dab in the middle. Yep. Yep. Come find me. So. Um, so. Now you're serving as secretary. Mm -hmm. You are still um, really trying to engage local businesses, both through your business, through um, Stony Music Fest, through you being a musician. Mm -hmm. All of those things, all of those connections, all those ties get you to where you need to get to, to be able to do the things you wanted to do. If you didn't have your community, uh, with, like myself and Frank included, right. Stony Music Fest probably would not have happened. Oh yeah, yeah, so without a doubt. We needed like a, the... a community of folk to get together and say, Hey, we're going to do this. And why are we doing it? Because we want to have music in North Rockford. Yeah. We don't want to have to go to Madison Square Garden. We don't want to have to go to Garden, uh, what is the Garden State Arts Center now? PNC? PNC, yeah. Right? We want to be able to come here. Yeah. So we did it. And everyone who showed up had a great time. Yeah. I think great. the businesses did well. We had, we had, yeah, we had, um, the, and your dream of having more vendors there. Right. You know, local businesses, local artists, support local art, support, support local music. Um, the uh, local radio station in White Plains, um, Peak 107.1, yeah, yeah. they always do this whole New York's backyard. We are part of New York's backyard, too. And I know that they go out and they are doing on the radio level what we're talking about doing on the live music level. Mm -hmm. I know. I, I believe it's on Wednesday. Wednesday evenings, they're always playing someone local. I've had a couple of friends who um, are local musicians from Westchester who have actually made it to the to the mainstream really? through that radio station um they definitely support local well, yes 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 um peter cole and byron isaacs who is up with the years 
um, started a band called The Lost Leaders. And Peter Cole and I used to work together at State Chance for a long time. I did not and, know that. And he was always talking about how he was this musician. I was like, hey, hey, hey you're State Chance, you're State Chance. And all of a sudden, I'm hearing him on the radio. Boom. Yeah. How do you get there? Well, you got to play out and you got to meet the right people. And what we're trying to do with Sponsor Band is get those right people in our community so you, those things can happen. You know, that's a good point. And, you know, we brainstorm on this show, too. So maybe we should reach out to the peak, you know, just, just to kind of create that connection over time. You hear that, Coach? We're coming for you. All right. <laughs> but the, All right. So that's another idea that we can, you know, I'll, I'll make a few phone calls yeah. and see if I could connect with the right people. And if um, any of you know the right people or have any contacts or ideas for us, please send them along. Yeah, absolutely. You know, this is going to be on YouTube, obviously Facebook, spray be something in the comments, community. AOL, um, you know, it's not going to be on Snapchat. It might be on Instagram. Can you put this on Instagram? I, I don't know. even know. I'm, I'm, too, old. I'm too old to yeah. know. <laughs> it's like MySpace. MySpace. Yeah. Now we're getting really old. You know, my, thanks. Hold on. You know, AOL Instant Messenger. How's that? Instant <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember the first time that you discovered the interwebs? Um, yes, because I have I've had computers a long, long time, mm -hmm. um, and the when I, when I went to school in Potsdam, many of my friends were IT folk, and I was actually talking to one of them recently, and he said when he was an IT student, um, kids didn't have computers because they were too expensive. Mm -hmm. And the only time you have access to a computer was in the computer lab. Right. So we had something that was, before the interwebs, there was intra. So like if you were part of your college system, you could talk to any of your college people. Yeah. And that was my first experience with that whole um, social media, which wasn't really social at that point. It was like you had to know the person, you had to know their name, you had to know the thing. But once that happened, you communicate with them in whatever room you were in. Like what, whenever time, whatever time, and everything like right. that. Yeah. Right. And it was pre-text, pre-cell phones and all that. But it was a good way to connect and form more communities. Mm -hmm. So how about internet, like when it, it expanded to the point, we're going back uh, to the, like the 90s, this is after ARPANET. Right. So I remember buying the fastest machine at the time. It was a... 486 DX266 or DX466. And it was the fastest thing. It is a boat anchor now. Um, and that, we had dial up because there was no other way. Um, and again, I remember dialing into the college network, talking to my friends, meeting up with people, trying to form uh, local parties, local entertainment for ourselves, mm -hmm. which is not too dissimilar to what we're trying to do with our music thing, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. So. Form communities and everything like that. Mine was uh, my friend Lindsay Arrowesty. Mm -hmm. I remember the name very well. Okay. I was hanging out at her house and just, you know, gabbing things, that and the other, and she was on AOL. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was like, what are you doing? She's like, oh, I'm on the internet. I was like, what's that? <laughs> Seriously. What's that? It's like, you know, and uh, <laughs> technically speaking, she you know, kind of changed the trajectory of my life. Because uh, I, the moment I went on there, I was like, "Whoa, this is like a whole new world." <laughs> it was wild, yeah. you know. So I got into it and was at the bike store. I made a website for getting a BMX track around okay. here, okay. so okay. it was pretty chill. But uh, yeah, it's like, and that was like, goodness, it's twenty. So this is, uh, I was about to say, this is nineteen twenty-three. This is two thousand twenty-three. Nineteen twenty-three. <laughs> So we, we have back. we have stepped into the hot tub time machine version of or what are you consuming? Hot tub. What time were they machine. consuming in 1923? I don't even know. Yeah, uh, alcohol because of prohibition. No, not alcohol because of prohibition. I'm gonna take a guess and say alcohol because of prohibition. Less, alco less alcohol. <laughs> well, you know, less less alcohol on on the uh, you know on the official records. Well, I mean. Cops would be in the in the bars. I, I Government once, officials will be. In I had once asked movies. the folks down at McSorley's downtown in Manhattan, who claim to have to be the longest running bar in New York City, uh -huh. continuously open. And I said, "But what? What about prohibition?" And they just smiled and said, "We paid off the cops." 
you know? So that's what they did a hundred years ago. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm kind of, you know, obviously I, I don't imbibe or anything like that. So I'm kind of, uh, happy that, uh, cannabis has, uh, been legalized. Oh, for uh, so many reasons. Right. Uh, but I kind of get like Vito Corleone and I'm just like, got to keep it away from the kids sort of thing. So, you know, I'm, I'm overall glad that it's like, you know, because people were doing it. I I'm told people were doing it, uh, before I, to it. I was doing it. You were no, since I was really, no, I was still this tall. <laughs> oh, <clears throat> what? Stop. So the interesting thing I see about this is not just this whole pothead movement. It's that you have something that's a plant that has so many compounds and, and, and uh, chemicals in it that hasn't really been researched. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Pardon me. Um, and from this this economic development thing that, that we kind of look at both through uh, small business and all of that, all of the jobs that are going to be created. Mm-hmm. Not just this whole we're going to the dispensary, but the science jobs, the the science labs that can start taking this plant apart into pieces and going, oh, this might fit, fix Parkinson's, this might fix this might cure cancer. Right, right. All we know Good. it's all sitting there, and we just haven't researched it because for the last hundred years we've been told, no, 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 you can't. Antioxidant effects. Yeah, we don't know what it is yet because well, we haven't had the opportunity. Yeah, I am looking forward to the scientific advancements that we're going to have and the jobs that are going to be created in the Hudson Valley because I know New York State is pushing for high-tech manufacturing and agriculture and that's one of the reasons they're pushing but right now from what I understand uh this is because you know tuning in on the news these days is legislation wise it's uh new licenses are being held up and what happened is uh a group of individuals I'm not saying for or against I'm just stating the news pretty much is that a group of individuals uh, have decided to uh, sue New York State uh, saying that the licenses the way that they're doled out is they were doled out and you know it's an unfair unfair practice unfair practice and so on so um, you know there's it's basically going through the court system right now so new licenses are going to be held up for some time until it uh, goes through the judicial process no when you're talking about licenses you're talking about dispensary licenses correct you're not talking about, hey, let's go start a science lab and study pot. Yeah. Because that's what I'm talking about is uh, we're the scientists. Let's mm-hmm. bring some, some science. Let's get some science to this marijuana. Yeah. yeah. Instead of it just being. Well, yeah. And, you know, from what I understand, plant. there's also different ways that one can ingest, um, you know, cannabis and such. You know, you hmm. can smoke it. Um, you could do a gummy. There's actually something called a tincture. That if uh, if you create it the proper way, you can look it up uh, as long as you're in a place where it's legal to do. But you can take uh, the marijuana, uh, the cannabis buds, mm-hmm. uh, you pop it in an oven, uh, 225 degrees, wait, wait, wait. 40 minutes. That's awfully specific for someone who doesn't know anything about it. Well, I look at it from an outside perspective. Uh, I, I basically essentially mm-hmm. just try to look at it from a, a cerebral uh, objective point of view. Yeah, and that's what marijuana is for, to make you more cerebral. Yeah, yeah, cerebral. Well, it depends on, from what I understand, it depends on... You know the the type of cannabis because there's two specific types of cannabis there is sativa and then there's indica well as one who is into the history of plants indica comes from asia and he's a great gardener by the way he's and freaking, sativa to to is hat, from north america yeah um and like with tomatoes or peppers or corn or anything else People have been hybriding and uh, selectively breeding these, these plants for hundreds of years. Mm-hmm. Um, so even with that, with with your, there are two types. There are two types that have been crossbred so much that it's an infinite number. Mm-hmm. It's so it's more than number. sativa and indica. Right. There's all of these hybrids. Um, a cousin of marijuana is the hop plant, which you use to make beer, which I have been a beer maker in my life. Um, Craft. Yeah. There are lots of different hops, and there were very. There was a narrow number, and then the craft beer revolution happened, and then there were hundreds. Mm-hmm. So I also expect there to become more and more and more varieties of marijuana as we have more science, we have more agriculture, and it's the same as if you go to the store 
and you buy a tomato, you probably have choices. Mm -hmm. If you go to the farmer's market, you have a hundred choices of right. tomatoes. So it's, it's really plans. about who's farming it and who, what their passion is. Oh, I, I want this one because I want it for me and I'm just going to sell off the rest. Mm -hmm. So you have no clue really how big this could get. So like dispensaries and things like that, they, uh, they get it from the local farmers, I guess. That sort of thing. I, I would think that, and I don't know the legislation, but in my mind from a place of New York is doing this to keep up with the Joneses, New Jersey and Connecticut right. and Massachusetts. Um, the idea is to keep the e economy vertically integrated in New York. So that would make the, sense. The companies aren't allowed to vertically integrate, but from a New York perspective, if you are growing here, mm -hmm. passing it off to the next New York company, passing it off to the next New York company to do the processing, distribution things, channels, and then it ends up at a uh, distri distribution place as a dispensary. Mm -hmm. That's all New York product going through New York businesses, and New York gets to tax at each point, which I know they're sticking their hand in the till, but at least it is keeping it regional. Right. Now, this is a precursor to the Fed one day uh, taking off the Schedule A uh, enforcement of it. It seems to me that this, uh, you know, again, just back to the premise is, you know, you keep it away from the kids, yes. you know, have it in safe environments. Just like cigarettes or well. booze, you're supposed to keep those away from kids, too. Mm -hmm. So the Fed, you know, basically is keeping it as a Schedule A, and that way interstate commerce is still, you know, kind of like not not accepted, obviously. So yeah. from that, with that in mind, it is actually helpful to the state governments now that have legalized because you can't get it from out of state. Mm -hmm. It encourages you to get have this state. as a yeah. literally homegrown industry. Mm -hmm. Indeed. So. Well, once a person gets it, they could drop it in the oven, 225 degrees, uh, you know, for 40 minutes, take it out, Run it through some Everclear. It's like a, what is Everclear for those who don't know? Everclear know is. is pure alcohol, like absolutely pure. Uh, like, uh, as close to pure as you can buy at the store. Yeah, well, you know, pure is actually just vapor, but it's like, you know, liquid form alcohol, but like the purest, it's like, you know, 190 proof or some crazy amount like that. Mm -hmm. So basically what happens is, is it, it takes all of what's called, if I'm not mistaken, it's called the terpenes. Terpenes uh, are the... the the things that give it its smell and taste. Yeah, so it extracts that uh, from from the bud, uh, and then what you do is you take that, you put it in like a, a, a dark, cold environment, or you know, like a less than room temperature environment for a few days, and then you could just take it and literally, if you wanted to, you could put it into a, a drink or a cup of coffee or something like that. Now, you mentioned gummies as a way to consume it. And I want to expand and down that little rabbit hole because I've been to dispensaries out in Colorado. I've been to Las Vegas. I've been a bunch of places all over the country. Um, and they literally look like candy stores inside, which is goes back to your point, keep it away from the children. Um, now all of these uh, candy products have to be clearly labeled that they usually have marijuana leaves big on them. So everybody knows this is medicated candy, but there really is no limit to how you can um, edibly consume mm -hmm. marijuana. Right. Yeah. I mean, I imagine. I don't know. Like, I, I, I have friends who put it in chocolate. They put it in the butter. They can uh, really? it use in olive oil um, and all of these base fats. I've seen it as um, medicated ice cream, <laughs> medicated Oreos and, and nutty butters. Mm -hmm. like. It can go into anything, which again leads to that whole. But what about the children? The scare about we need to be more responsible as human beings. Well, yeah, no, absolutely. And that's part of it is if you're doing things with intent, things you're not gonna, you're going to make a whole lot less mistakes. Right. Yeah. And part of it is keep your medicine away from children. I don't care if it's a prescription or a candy bar. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. You know, veto core. I don't want to keep it away from the kids. Uh, we should, we should keep all of the dangerous things away from the kids. Yeah. If you want to have it, if you want to have a dangerous thing, it should be done in a safe manner. Yeah. yeah, seriously. I gotta say, you know, I'm I'm saying this as a non-father. I don't have 
uh, kids, if that happens, God willing, one day, great. But you are an excellent father. Why, thank you. And I want to say, and the reason why, has nothing, I haven't even met his kids. But, They're um, exceptional, by the way. They are. They are. I know, because you're a good father. But, um, you know, whenever Mike is available, he makes himself readily available for anyone. When it comes to the kids, hey, Mike, do you? Nope, I have the kids. That's sure. it. My kid time is story. my kid time. Yeah. A lot of respect for you. I think Seriously. So. I'm trying to bring good humans who understand about local businesses and local stuff. And I am trying to create three little amazing geek nerds. Geek nerds. I taught them how to play Dungeons and Dragons. We watch all court, all sorts of cool sci-fi shows. Mm -hmm. um, my kids are into all sorts of fun, really fun stuff. And there are times where I go to bring them uh, music and social media stuff and content, and they look at me and they're like, Father, we already know that. <laughs> Father. Did, did, did you know about their other 17 songs? I'm like, they, they have other stuff. <laughs> so there are times, uh, which, which movie was it? Um, in concept. So my children. I haven't seen that yet. And this is my, to my point. My yeah. children are like, hey, Dad, we want to watch this movie. And I'm like, whatever. I'm like, whatever you want. And I go to put it on this movie and we watch the movie. And then within days, I think I talked about this last season on our shows. Within days, everybody was talking about this movie that I had just watched. And I thought it was a movie that had been out. Mm. And I was just watching it because my kids wanted to watch it. And my kids actually put me on the forefront of hip. Mm. I, knew, I knew about the stuff before everybody else. Hip with it. Duck it, 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 duck it. I am, I am too hip to be square, like you really said. <laughs> mm. Or like Danny DeVito in the movie Heist. You're just too hip to be happy. No, 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 no. we're both happy. And happily, I think we do have to end shortly because well, I have a, a regular old Zoom meeting. You know, yeah, we got yeah, a few yeah. minutes. So I just wanted yeah. to, I, we didn't talk about it. We just figured we'd get Is there anything it. else we want to discuss today? Oh, my goodness. Well, what do you got going on this week? Um, let's see. Um, a couple friends get them getting married this weekend, so I'm going to go up and visit them. Mazel tov. Um, some birthdays. Probably eat some more birthday cake, get fatter. Mm -hmm. um, well. Well, RCC is uh, gearing up, so the college students will be in. We're trying to educate our local folk at our local community college. Let's keep the community back in community college. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's not, not a whole lot of uh, other than that normal August kind of the summer's winding down. We're moving into fall. Hey, fall means screw that pumpkin spice apple. It's all about apple cider. You know what sucks? is that the when summer starts to feel real yeah that's exactly when it's the the general consensus is like all right we got to start preparing for you know back to school because you're, uh, you're over the hump yes 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 august yes. but you yes. know what we're here i'm just right. glad that we're we're here and we'll, we'll be ready for fall so folks we're going to try and do this every monday morning hopefully we will get a bunch of monday mornings um out and i hope you come and visit us um, we're going to try and set it up so there'll be a screen that if you want to ask us questions while we're yeah. live, we didn't go do this today because it's our first episode of the season and we were a little sleepy this morning. So um, I want to do a couple more plugs. Rockland Web Design, which is Tom, Tommy's company. There we go. Um, company one. Um, you musicians, restaurant owners, uh, People who love music and want to sponsor them, please check us out at sponsorband.com. Company right? three. Um, and even if you are not um, coming to our local stuff, go see local music wherever you are. Yeah, absolutely. If you go visit, let's say, say you are in Sedona, Arizona, go find their local beer and their local food. Don't go to McDonald's. Don't go to Applebee's. Go find the local folk because those people... They need that. They need that money. McDonald's doesn't need your money. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Frank Acasio brother band is playing over at Casa del Sol very soon. I think yeah. it's going to be next weekend. I'm not exactly sure when, but check them out. FOBB. Does sponsor band have a schedule of all the bands that we represent and where they are playing? We have an entertainment section on something bigger. Rockland's Rock News. Rock so, so if you go to rocklandnews.com forward slash entertainment, you're going to see many different bands that are going to be playing over the next several months. Every time that, um, by the way, bands, if you've got something coming up, 
send us the press release for it and we will post it. Maureen's Jazz Cellar always okay. sends us like something okay. every week. They, Maureen, I, every time I'm talking to another friend, they're always like, oh, I went to Maureen's last night. I was like, oh, Maureen's got, got something going on. I've been there a couple of times. It's a cool little place. It's a, a, a cellar bar, like speakeasy almost kind of thing in Nyack. Uh, a lot of fun. Go check it out. Um, but even if you are not a musician, restaurant owner, or sponsor person, and you're just looking for entertainment, come check out our place because we're trying to get that news out to you so you can enjoy the fruits of the local labor. Rocklandnews.com forward slash entertainment. You're going to see more and more. And you just check it out, like, you know, the local weather, what's going on on a daily basis. You can keep in tune with some things that are affecting Rockland County. In a good tune, example I like it. In tune, yeah. <laughs> so, you know, it's not just about the entertainment part of it. It's also the serious part of it. And a good example, I mean, we're keeping tabs on this. We're going to be posting a story in a little while is that, um quite frankly and i'm again i'm i'm the new we, we are the news we're not supposed we to are well we're not supposed to lewis had the news well that's they're going to be maybe somebody at the Boulder stadium at some point but the point is is that um you know there's going to be uh a, the contentious issue of uh migrant uh oh. migrants coming into rockland county it is working its way through the court system right now and uh, we, Rockland News just found out that uh, Mayor Adams from New York City and uh, Governor Holkel uh, have a plan to transport many thousands of migrants across the state of New York. Uh, so we'll be putting some information about that. Uh, and again, this is the news. This is what's happening. It's just to keep you informed. And as best as possible, we want to try and give you the information so you can make those informed decisions on how you feel about it. That particular issue and then you know if you catch the entertainment section that's great because we want to do really put some good vibes in this county um got some good people running it uh but you know we also want to make sure that uh you the community have the ability to help run it because it's a community absolutely you know so buy local listen local consume great things mm -hmm. let us know how you feel send us messages Ask us questions. We'd love to do research. We want to help. We want to entertain you. And we want to inform you. And most importantly, you and I on this podcast, we want to inspire people. Absolutely. So go find your people. Go consume great things. Have a great day. Have a great week. We'll see you Monday. Have a great life. No, wait. Actually, come back for a few more episodes. Mondays. Monday mornings. Monday mornings. Monday mornings. We're trying to do this every Monday. <laughs> <laughs> no. Next week you're coming back as Dr. Evil. No, I can't come back. That's going to be campy. All right, yes, I will. <laughs> <laughs> there Such we go. A oh, you know what? We'll just, right. we'll just post it in the links. Yeah. So, as soon as we're done, are we done? I guess we're done. I guess we're done. Bye, folks. Peace.